after we've imported, we're going to a couple of small metadata changes. We will go into data type mappings. In, that's a specialist subject. We'll go that into that in separate training sessions. But for now, what we need to do is just go to our product model here. And as you can see here, we've got catalog description, which is an XML column. And by default, you know, SSIs don't uh, move XML columns around that well. So we're going to go in here and just use a what we call a data type mapping. So data type mappings is where we can take a source um, data type and map it to a target data type. So I'm just going to map this to a string max, which that will mean is that the data vault objects will actually be created as a, as a envirechar max instead of an XML, which is more um, handleable. There is a whole um, section here about data type mappings that is covered in separate section. All right, now after we've loaded the sample metadata, it's time to start importing some metadata. So the first thing you want to do is go to your connections tab here and where we have the AWL underscore SRC, which stands for AdventureWorks LT Source. This has been configured to point to my local host here and to the AdventureWorks LT database. Now you should have followed the instruction to, at this stage to actually have that database installed. However, you may have put that on a different server, so you'll replace the connection string here, the logical host. And you may, if you've got SQL authentication, you'll need to uh, uh, amend your connection string to point there. But for now, let's leave everything else in place. The other connections that we have at the moment here is the staging connection, which again is going to take the data from the source and put it into our staging database. Um, again, change the connection string if you need to. And then we have the ODS. So we are going to do a persistent staging on our ODS layer here. Again, change the connection string should you have to. Uh, leave everything else as it is. And then we have a raw data vault or data vault connection here. Um, we've set this to a connection type of OLAP DB. So we're going to use ELT based uh, stored procedure driven data vault. Um, again, change the data connection string, leave the rest as it is. And then lastly, we have the data mart connection here. Um, and again, you know, we're going to use that later on. Uh, if you're not doing a data vault, obviously we'll have the walkthrough of going straight from staging into the data mart layer. Again, change the connection string should you need to. The other things that we have is the batches. So Bulmaflex works on the concept of you have a project and within that project you can have one or many batches and within those batches they will execute uh, one or many packages um, or workloads. Um, the, and the, the, this is a standard pattern whether you're using SSIS or as a data factory, they will get set up this way. So uh, the metadata for the default is set up to, um, in a kind of one-to-one -one way, so one project, one batch a whole bunch of tables, um, both for the source, the data vault, and the data mart. Um, in other examples, we, we go into more detail on that. So the source system here, we've configured that as the batch. Um, we've, we said that we want to uh, execute two threads, at a, which is basically two packages at a time, and the rest of that leave it as it is. We've got a data vault project here that goes from, you know, that a batch here that, again, two threads, but again, leave it as it is. Um, a lot of these settings are covered in other um, the documentation here. The last thing is the project. Now the project is effectively the, the glue, the thing that brings it all together. Um, here we have the extract of the source. So what we've set this up to, to do here is to go from a source, land the data into staging, persist the data in an, an ODS database or persistent staging database, and then we're going to go into Data Vault. Um, when we record the sessions on the Data Mart, we will show you how to reconfigure this to exclude the Data Vault and go straight into the Data Mart. The data vault project is very simple. We're going to go from staging into the data vault, and the data mart is simple. Again, we're going to go from the data vault into our data mart um, staging layer here and then merge the data back into the. These two databases can be different, but for the walkthrough, we leave them as the same. And again, when we do the data mart, we will recon if we only do data mart without data vault, we will reconfigure this later on. So now that we have this configured, we want to go to our source project, or you can also get to it from your source connection here. We want to import the metadata. So I'm going to click the Import Metadata button. We're going to leave all of these uh, settings here as, as it is. Again, those are covered in, in spe special specific videos about the importing metadata in, in other sections of our documentation. But for now, I'm just going to collect, select all of my tables here. Now, I've in my database, I've removed the views. But if you have the views, unselect them here or unselect the import views. But effectively, we want all of these tables imported. We click the Import Metadata button. And then if you go to the Connections, you can see here that you have all of your tables imported. You can go and look into them. They'll have business keys or integration keys all set up here. Um, and that's really it at the moment. So that's all about importing metadata. This also, what I've just done here, um, is the starting point for this sample metadata here. 
So I will keep coming back to this import after metadata. Um, so all of those steps that we've done gets us to that sample metadata here.